Hello and welcome to my channel on the hood crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style. Today is no different. We will be talking about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's on the hook. Now, uh, today is a late week video. This is a little bit more laid back. There won't be any giveaways given or talked about on here. You can sign up for my giveaways though. I always put links down in the description box and the rules for the giveaway will be there and you can see when the winners will be announced. And that's usually on Mondays. I'm really going for Mondays now, Monday to Monday. And that gives everyone a chance to watch my video and also to sign up for the giveaway. So that's where we are right now. So next Monday we'll have the giveaway winner announced for the cotton candy yarn that I talked about in my last video. So this is late week video time and I want, first of all I want to welcome you to my channel. Those who are new, thank you for joining me and those who have been with me for a while, uh, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. This is supposedly going to be a <laughs> a very comfortable laid-back video. I'm not going to talk a mile a minute. I hope that I can give you something to take away, some information, some inspiration, and something for your imagination as well. So uh, today I have a finished object. I have a work in progress that's moving right along. And I also have a look at the work table where we'll look at my diamond painting that I'm working on for Summer with the Masters. So we have kind of a short video today, so stay with me, grab your crochet and a cup of coffee or whatever you're drinking, and let's talk. First of all, let me clean up a couple of things that um, I wanted to talk about. A thank you note that was sent to me by Bar Brenda in Bradford, Tennessee. Brenda, thank you for your note. It was for a giveaway that she had won. And thank you, Brenda, for the beautiful thank you note. I appreciate that. It's so fun to open my post box and see a card from somebody in there. It's really nice to see that. And then a couple of weeks ago, I had said that there was a lovely lady named Donna who was from South Carolina. No, Donna is from Canada. <laughs> I had that wrong. I had circled the wrong thing on her envelope. So Donna from Canada, I am clearing that up. She sent me a really nice thank you note with some beautiful birds on the front. And she has made, if you remember back, if you've watched my videos, she has made 12 of my patterns. And she says they fit her so great. So that's a great testimonial, Donna. Appreciate that so much. I want everybody to know that my patterns are not sized. I get this question all the time. No, they are not sized. They are sized to fit you. You put your measurements in the fill in the blank and then you crochet up to make that size and you work from there. And I give you all the instructions you need to finish the sweater and to make it fit you and also to design it the way you want. Neckline, sleeves, the fit, the boxy or close to the body. Those are all decisions that you make after you get the pattern. You can decide how you want this sweater to look. So I always leave it up to the designer, which is you. And you get to decide how large or small your sweater is and how it fits you uh, across the shoulders and everything. Everything is up to you. And I'm not leaving you hanging. I always give you plenty of direction on how to do that. Now, today, what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a brand new Plain Jane tee. You've seen me work on this uh, for a couple of weeks. I made this out of co cream cotton from Michaels, loops and threads. It's very lovely yarn. It's mostly cotton, and it's very, very soft. I think it has some nylon in it as well. And this is the stone and clay color right here and then the light gray right here. So those are two colors that you can get from Michaels. I think they still stock those. I did actually buy these at Michaels, so they were on the shelf and they were on sale. They might've been $4.99 a piece. And truthfully, I only used two balls. I used two balls to make this and part of a third because one ball was short, maybe 50 yards or the other ball had 50 yards more. But as I made the sweater, I realized that I was using the exact same amount of yarn of each stripe and the balls were a different length. So you have to be aware of that. Not try to play yarn chicken with your yarn. If you think you might need another ball, just go ahead and buy it because you never know when the store might run out or they might quit carrying the yarn. I just, I've had that happen a time or two. And that happened with the Monet yarn that I talked about on Monday. 
and I made the other plain Jane tea out of that and I'll show you that again if you've missed it but crystals want to model over here so I'm going to bring her out in just a second but I wanted to show you what I made this is the third version of the plain Jane tea it is a striped version and it has a special edging on it I will be sending out the directions for this edging and the edging for the Monet yarn um, plain Jane tea in a day or two I've almost finished writing I just want to be sure I get everything correct now I'll step back and let you see this tea this is a boxy boxy fit look how big that is that's a big boxy but I wanted it to be extra comfortable I made it a little bit longer so that it's um, you know well below about mid hip and this is what the back looks like it's very very comfortable this is the softest cotton in the world. I just, I really love this cotton. And um, there are sure uh, other companies that carry good cotton, but um, really impressed with this particular one. Last year, I made my golden cross tee, out of, or golden cross sweater out of this, and I've worn it many times. I made another one just like it in a different color of cream cotton. So, um, Thumbs up to Michaels for this wonderful yarn. I really like it. It hangs nicely too. It has some drape. It's not extremely drapey, but it's not stiff. This is a very good fit. Now, if you'll notice on the sides, I have the, the, the stripes are matching, of course, and if you make it according to my directions, they'll match up. I match them on the sides, but when I sew the seams, you have to sew the seams for one color all at once and then go back and sew the seam for the second color because if you sew both seams with the white for example it'll show through to the gray and if you if you sew it in the with the gray thread or with the gray yarn it will show up right here on the white so uh, this isn't white but it's very very light color and then I made the edging with baubles and popcorns or whatever you want to call them uh, puff stitches, I think is what I call them. And I actually uh, explained in the last video how I got this to fit. And I decreased on that very last row right here on the edge. And it worked just great. It brought in that neck and everything's laying very flat. I don't have any problem with the way it fits. So there are two ways you can do that. Apparently you can decrease in these rows when you first start working on the neckline and then uh, not decrease on the last row or you can do it in a, you know the other way around so that way you can decide how you want to decrease but my suggestion would be to go ahead and decrease on these rows so you can make sure the neckline's right before you start your puff stitch row because it does stick out just a little bit so you want to be sure that your neckline is tight to your chest before you start the puff stitches and then when you put the last row on it should be just right so that is what I made. Now, Crystal wants to come over and show you the other Plain Jane tee. This is out of the Monet yarn. This has a different edging. This is a uh, just a window edging. You see the holes in there? I hope you can see that. Um, it's around the neck, the sleeves, and also around the bottom of the sweater. I wanted to um, repeat that around. This one turned out really nice. I wore it all day the other day, and it was so comfortable. And I plan to wear this one all day, and hopefully it will be just as comfortable. I did not use short rows at the top of this sweater. Um, I didn't really need them. It doesn't ride back. I don't know why some sweaters do and some sweaters don't. But uh, it's cert certainly an option if you want to use short rows. But I don't think you need to fill up the back of the sweater. Especially for your sw summer sweater, it's going to um, give you more air if you have it pulled over. Now, this neckline is different from this one. This one starts right here. If you'll see my fingers, this is where I stopped crocheting for this row right here. This is the center of the sweater. And on this particular one, I stopped a few stitches over to the side farther open than this. This was, um, I think, even a little taller on me. It's, uh, it stands up a little higher and it's a little bit more narrow so it comes right about like that on me but this one I designed it to be a little bit wider which you can certainly do and you just um, increase the number of stitches from the center over to where you stop for the neckline and then you start decreasing 
So that matters because this right here is where I stopped. And then I added three rows of single crochet, a row of puff stitches, and another row of single crochet here. And I still have a nice open neckline because I started it way over here. And when I put this on, I tried it on, <laughs> it was way too low. It was down here. And, and I thought, well, I've got to fill that up. But once I started working on the neckline, I realized that I had planned to make a pretty wide neck edging. So that made the neckline come up and come in just a little bit. But I still have it wide enough to where it is very comfortable. See down in the back, it still has room to breathe. So uh, I did not add any um, rows to the sleeves either, which is certainly your prerogative. You can add rows here. But the only rows I added were a row of single crochet, a row of puff stitches, and another row of single crochet. So it's very, very simple edging. I did not add all these three, four, three rows. I think it was a single crochet here. I just added one row, then I started the puff stitch, and then I edged it. So that's how I did this one. I also did the bottom edging, and it is one row of single crochet, puff stitch, and then a row of single crochet to finish. And you want to alternate your yarn colors at the bottom and also around the sleeve. You'll see that always end up with the primary color and make it the same for each edging. I use the stone and clay color here, here, and also on the bottom of the sweater. So if you want to coordinate your colors, that makes it look a little bit more pulled together. Uh, even then a solid band. I just thought it would be really nice to use the stripe again in the edging. So that's how I designed this edging. Of course, you can do it any way you want, but I'm going to send out the directions for this edging and this edging to the community uh, either tomorrow or maybe Saturday. I don't think it'll take me any longer than that to finish it. And it'll just be a PDF attached to your email. So be looking for that email and put it with your pattern. Even if you don't use it right away, go ahead and print it and put it with your pattern. And that way, when you decide to make one of these, you'll have an option of three different edgings. Now onto the whip that I'm working on. Y'all know I like to have lots of whips to work on, and I have several over here. But this one I is taking precedence right now because it's summertime. And I'm making this from Audine Wool's Interlock uh, by Knit Crate. There's the, there's the label. It's an interlock, so that means that it's like a chain yarn. And y'all have seen this before. I'll try to get it up there where you can see it. It's a, it's a chain. It's not, well, it's not wrapped and it's not twisted. It's a chain yarn, and so it never splits. I've used this on a couple of items, and I really like it. It's so soft. And let me tell you what's in this. It's 34% cotton and 35% linen, 19% lyocell, which I don't know what that is. Maybe, I don't know what that is. And 11% nylon, 351 yards on the hank. And as you see, I've still got this one uh, in the original form, I have one other hank that I have um, balled up on my um, Swift. And, and then I have this one that I'm using now. And this is how much I've used. It's, you know, probably about three-fourths finished. And it's, I love the way the, that you can pull from the center. And I always make sure that when I wrap my hanks on my Swift and my ball winder, I always make sure that I keep that middle piece way out so that I can grab it when I go to crochet with this, with any kind of yarn that I wrap up. I leave it on the hank most of the time because I understand that it stays relaxed when it's in the hank. When you ball it, it's pulled a little bit tighter. So um, I understand that you shouldn't leave it balled up. You know, it shouldn't be the first thing you do when you get a hank of yarn. You should leave it, let it rest, and not use it in a ball until you're ready to actually crochet with it or knit with it, whatever you're doing. So I still have these two hanks left, and I'm still working on this. Now, I haven't gotten that far on the actual sweater. I have marked the front with a with my uh, stitch marker. Now, this whole, this sweater, I have started with a double crochet. Very simple, but it's beautiful in this yarn. This yarn uh, is almost like a color pooling, just like the pink yarn I use for uh, the Plain Jane Tee. Although it's, um, it's a natural fabric, and it makes a natural fabric, so it's very, very casual looking. It's not stripy. It color pools just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that even because it's so subtle. 
but it is beautiful it's not all one color you'll see that the colors are woven in as you make the fabric and I really like that about this yarn now I'm going to make this this is the soft linen tee for summer this is probably my last maybe my next to the last sweater tee that I'm making for summertime and I want to give you all lots of options so that if you want to make a, a summer tee you can find something on my Etsy shop that you like um, this is the bottom of the front I believe I'm going to do the front first but maybe the back I'll probably do the back first because I want to make sure I get the stitch right but this stitch at the top is going to be a yoke and it's going to come right about here and then the yoke is going to extend to the shoulder and then I'll mimic that um, on the other side like this is the back then I'll mimic that on the front on the side front where the yoke would be and the yoke is going to have some front post treble crochet stitches which are fun and it goes really fast let me show you a close-up of that this is what it looks like and you have to and I've kind of bordered it with some single crochet rows and then I've done some front post treble stitches across two rows and I'll show you how to do that not difficult believe me but it gives your sweater a little interest at the top and I thought this could use that because it's not a very fancy sweater but this will be the whole top of the sweater here you can't really see through it any more than you can the bottom so it's not going to affect that although it's going to be up here so it's not going to be um, probably a sweater that you have to wear a tank underneath um, you might wear a camisole some people like to do that and I always forget to mention that that's an option if you don't want to wear a full tank top under a sweater you can wear a camisole which covers up a little bit more it's not like just having your underwear on but I like this cotton this cotton you cannot see through and since I since I crocheted it I tried it on a couple of times and you can't really see through it it's so comfortable I'll be wearing this quite a bit this summer this is very very comfortable and because it's got a wide neck on it it's very cool this will probably be in, along the same lines it's not going to be all covered up up here I think I'm going to leave the the neck long and uh, put the yoke on it it'll be nice it'll be different it'll be a nice pattern and I can't wait to get that out there but this is a very very soft yarn I'm not sure if they still have it on the knit crate website before I publish this video I'll go down in the description box and put a link to it if they still have some of this I don't know that but it was sponsored by TL Crafts and you all know who that is um, she has a wonderful website uh, wonderful YouTube channel I should say and probably a website and she sponsored this for knit crate one month and I really really liked it I think I even bought it in a couple other colors in a sweater in a sweater uh, quantity so that way I could have it if I wanted it <laughs> and I saw this on my shelf and I thought I don't like brown but I'm going for this tan color for summer just for something different so that's my work in progress now I have been talking about diamond painting I know y'all some of y'all love it and some of y'all I haven't heard from but I'm guessing that it's okay because I want to show you some different crafts and this one I have really enjoyed working on I work on it every evening for a couple of hours and I'm keeping my time so that I'll know how long it took me to make this epic diamond painting that I'm working on it's called Garden at Argentui and it's by Claude Monet very very beautiful painting and uh, it has a little white house in the background it's got beautiful garden in the front and what I did the other day is I had it in my stash and I opened it up I rolled it out I marked the corners because I want to be sure that I know what part I'm working on <laughs> and uh, like bottom left top left top right and with a sharpie right at the corner of the canvas then I unpeeled the cover paper and I decided to just work on one corner at a time and that way it wouldn't just be so overwhelming I did measure over my fireplace and there's going to be ample room for this beautiful diamond painting so that is my um, encouragement that I will be working on this trying to finish it because I want to hang it up over my fireplace so now I'm going to take the camera to my work table and show you a couple of things about this diamond painting it's not going to take a long time but I just wanted to show you my progress on this project 
All right, so here we are at Jeannie's work table. There's my chair that I use. I roll it back and I sit in this every night and I work on my diamond painting. I'm gonna sit down right here so you can see, kind of get a bird's eye view of what I'm doing. This is the bottom right of my painting. And I'll put a picture of the painting on here so that you can see where I'm working. I'm working on the bottom right corner right here. So let me show you, I'll pull this back. And for the last couple of nights, I've been working on this and you can see the um, different colors in here. Let me get down here. This is an awesome camera. I, it really does focus beautifully. But you see that I'm missing some right here tonight. I wanna try to fill in the rest of these and move on. Now I've put a lot of diamonds on here and it's been a fun experience. I've really enjoyed it. Now the next piece I'm going to do, I think I'm gonna move up here to this piece. This is the middle of the painting. And if I pull that back, Okay, I've pulled this side back, and this is the middle of the, the piece on the right side. And up here is the legend, way up there, and at the top of the legend is the thumbnail of this particular diamond painting, and that is the top right. So I'm, right now I'm working at the bottom right, which I've already done this piece right here, and then I'm going to move up here next to this piece. So I'm just holding the paper back and working on it as well as I can. And then I just pull the paper back over the diamond painting and I move it at night from my easel and I'll show you why. This is the way I rolled it. This is a pool noodle. I don't know if you can see that. There's a pool noodle in there. There we go. There's a pool noodle in there and I've got this diamond painting wrapped around it and then I have it connected with a couple of clips very gently to each other. There's, the, painting is, uh, the painting is clipped to itself. It's not clipped to the pool noodle because I didn't have any clips that were wide enough to do that, so I just clipped it to itself. And this is where I set it on my easel, right here at night when I work on it, and I'm working over here. So it actually goes up way past the top of my easel. Look, here's the top of my easel. And then it goes way up here, but it's doing okay. I have it tilted onto my bookshelf and it kind of stays there while I'm working on it. And that way I can work on my easel and it's more of a straight up and down activity and I'm not leaning over a table in order to get this done. So I just want to step back and show you how I have that set up. Now, this little white thing right here, if you can see that little white piece, that is some museum putty. And actually, when I'm working on this, I move this over and I press this onto the putty so that it stays in place and it's not sliding down off the easel. So that's how I have it set up. And here are the colors. I don't know if I showed you these. I have kitted this up, as they call it, in the diamond painting world. And I took all of the diamond dots or the drills out of their little bags that they were in. And I put them in this storage unit here, basically. And there are little plastic sleeves that these fit into. Here are some extra drills I had that wouldn't fit into these little plastic boxes. But these are pretty good size. So... Most everything fit in here just fine. I just had a couple of colors that were too many. But if you can see this, this is a part of the legend. And what I did was I took a, a, a print of the legend on my printer. I, I put it through this little gadget. Let me show you this. This is so cool. Let me find it. This little gadget is a sticker maker, and I got this from Amazon. I'll put a link down at the, in the description box if you want to see it. Let me get this under the light here. This is a sticker maker, and you put your strip right in here, the one that has all the colors on it and the numbers, and you pull it out the bottom, and it attaches that strip to a piece of sticky tape, tape to a piece of sticky tape. And then you can cut it up, and put the pieces on these containers where you have 
your colors and so this has the color of the right there let me point something here this has the the color number which is in this case is number one it has the symbol that is uh, corresponds to it on the diamond painting and then this is the DMC number which is not totally necessary but when I finish this painting I will put these into a storage unit that I have for DMC colors I do not throw away my diamond drills they they're just too precious you don't want to throw those away uh, if you plan to do any more you definitely want to keep those in case you need to substitute or something like that so anyway here are all the beautiful colors and there are actually some underneath here look at that there were 48 colors in this particular diamond painting so after I got it all kitted up I felt very organized and then I started working on this so it's been pretty easy to work on I'm really proud of this part I've done this much so I will try to finish this this afternoon or this evening and then move on to the next square so that is where I am on my garden of Argentui and I know some of y'all were asking me about that so I just wanted to show this to you really quick now when we meet back here on Monday I will have my three diamond paintings that have been framed they are ready for me to pick up so I'm really excited about that I'll probably go today or tomorrow and pick those up and on Monday I will show those to you and I'll show you why I selected the particular frames that I did so I have three paintings that I took over to Hobby Lobby and they're very very good over there I trust them with anything that I take over there and they were very familiar with diamond paintings and they were um, excited to get started on the framing so they took about a week and then they called me and said they were ready so I'll go pick those up and on Monday I will show those to you as well hopefully I've made some progress on my whip and that's all I'm going to be working on this weekend is this particular sweater and the edgings will go out tomorrow or the next day on my PDF to you so that'll come in to the community and if you're not a member be sure to go down in the description box and sign up so I hope you have a lovely and wonderful weekend I'm excited about all my crafting I'm going to do so join me on Monday when we find out what's on the hook <laughs>